Okay, everybody, welcome back. I hope you're in the mood to do something fun because today's video is nothing short of fun. Today, what we're going to do is build on to our proofs and introduce a new technique where we do a conditional proof. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you, right? If, and this is a big if, if you are comfortable with the 18 rules of implication and rules of replacement, so if you can use those confidently, this will be so much easier for you to understand. If you are not yet comfortable with those, the replacement and implication, you should really master those first before moving on, because that will make what we're doing today miles easier. So we're doing conditional proofs. So how, what is a conditional proof and how do we use it? Well, let's say we're given some premises and a conclusion that we want to art lot that we want to argue towards logically, right? So our first premise, right? What we'll have is we'll say, uh, if A, then B and C, right? And then number two, we could say that this will be B or D, if B or D, then E. And the conclusion, which we would like to arrive to, is if A, then E. Now, with our 18 rules of replacement implication, I don't see an obvious way to get to our conclusion. I don't even know if it's possible to get to our conclusion. What we can do is this conditional proof thing, right? Where we assume we assume something for a conditional proof. And then we using that something and our premises, we argue towards another thing. And then we can say, okay, well, given if we assume this, then this will be true. So in practice, what does this look like? When we start a conditional proof, we draw this like vertical line and we move kind of inwards, like we indent to the right inside of our proof. And so here's what I want to do, right? Since if A, then E is our um, conclusion I want to arrive to, I'm just going to assume A for a conditional proof. And then hopefully we'll get to E in the end. So here's what we do. We start with number three still number our lines, and we say A, right? And this is our assumption for conditional proof. That's what we're doing. So we're going to assume A, and now, okay, this is something I can work with, right? From lines 1 and 3, we can use modus ponens to derive B and C, right? So from 1, 3, and modus ponens, we can conclude B and C. Now what I want to do is simplify this, right? I want to simplify uh, B and C to just B. So we'll say B, this came from line four, and this is from simplification. Okay, now, now I see my way out, right? I see that I can get E if I have B or D. Well, I can just do addition, right? I can add a D onto my B, right? So let's extend this vertical line, and on line six we'll say, okay, B or D, and this comes from line five and addition. And now, on line 7, what we'll do is we'll use modus ponens with lines 2 and 6 to derive E. So we get E from lines 2, 6, and modus ponens. So, what you can see is that I assumed A, and then through valid inference, derived E. So now what I'm going to do is discharge my conditional proof. So what does that mean? Basically, we start, we go, we re-indent, we go back to the left, right? Number our line eight. And I'm going to say, okay, if it's the case that you have A, then you can derive E, right? And we've logically shown that from lines three through seven and a conditional proof. So that's the shorthand for it. As you could see, if you assume A in conjunction with our given premises, you will always derive E. Therefore, we have proved what we wanted to prove. We have shown, given our two premises, A then E is a valid, if A then E is a valid argument. So that's how you do a conditional proof. Now, let's just do another one, right? I mean, why not? there's nothing more to this. Um, we just want to hammer this in with exercise. So let's do that. All right, our first premise for this next problem we'll do is if G, then H and I. Our second one will be if G, or oh, sorry, if J, then K and L. And then three will be G or J. 
And our premise, or I mean our conclusion, which we'll try to reach, is H or K. Now, just from looking at lines one, two, and three, I can already see like I have the requirements for a constructive dilemma. And this is why it's important to be comfortable, to be confident, the rules of implication and replacement. So you can automatically just like look at a problem and start seeing possible routes. So like I said, I see grounds for a constructive dilemma where I can conjoin lines one and two, and then with that conjunction and line three and a constructive dilemma, I could get H and I or K and L. I just want H or K. I, I want to forget about the I and the L. Well, what's another thing I'm looking at? Well, I see that if G, then H and I, right? Um, so I know that if I have G, I will have H and I, which means I can probably simplify that um, and just think, okay, well, if I have G, then I can get H, right? But simplification is a rule of implication. It's not a rule of replacement. So I can't just replace line one and just say, if G, then H, right? I have to go about this in a different way. What I could do are two conditional proofs. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right here. So line four, what I'm going to do is assume G and try to argue towards H because then I can discharge the conditional proof and say, all right, if G, then H. And that's what I want. So I will assume G for the sake of a conditional proof. All right, well, if I have G, then I can get H and I from lines one, four, and modus ponens. And now on line six, I can simplify that to just H, right? So five and simplification. And that's what I wanted to do, right? That's what I logically thought was true. Obviously, if I have G and that gives me H and I, I could just say I have H on its own, but I couldn't replace H and I with H in line one. I had to go about it through this conditional proof. So now I've shown what I wanted to show for my own purposes. I wanted to show if G then H. So I will discharge my conditional proof, right? I'll say lines, I'll say number seven, if G then H. This is a valid argument given by lines four through six and the conditional proof. And now, similarly, I would like to show if J, then K. And this is going to follow the exact same structure. So let's just write out these lines right here. Oh, sorry, not seven, eight, nine. We have eight, nine, and 10. It's going to follow the exact same structure, right? We're going to assume J for a conditional proof. We'll derive K and L from lines eight and two and modus ponens. And then we'll just derive K from simplifying line nine. So now that I, now I can discharge this conditional proof, right? You could show if J then K that comes from line eight through 10 conditional proof. Now I can do a constructive dilemma that will give me exactly what I want in my conclusion. So first I need to conjoin lines, I, lines seven and 11, right? So on line 12, we'll say if G then H and if J, then K. And that comes from line seven, 11 and conjunction. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, we'll put a little arrow up here and we'll just continue writing right there. Um, I don't want to scroll down. I want to have the whole proof on the page. So now that we're there, we'll start at line 13, right? And from line 13, uh, from lines three and 12 and a constructive dilemma, what we can do is argue H or K. I guess I didn't really need to draw this arrow. I probably could have fit it on the bottom, but uh, who cares? This comes from lines three, 12 and a constructive dilemma. And there you go. We reached exactly what we want to reach H or K using not one, but two conditional proofs in our argument. And I don't know. To me, that's a pretty cool thing. I hope it's cool to you. I hope it was easy to understand. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching. I truly appreciate it, and I hope you learned something.